We are three miles out to sea off the north slope of Alaska. Take a look down through that fog. That's a drilling rig on a tiny man-made island. BP owns the rig and dumped tons of gravel into the water only 22 feet deep to build up this island. Cost so far? About a billion dollars. BP says with Arctic ice flows, drilling from an island is safer than off a floating rig. But environmentalists claim that tiny island is a clever way of gaming the federal permit system. Attorney Rebecca Noblin represents one of a half dozen environmental groups. If anything were to go wrong, if there were an oil spill, that oil is going into the ocean. It's not on land. Um, so this really is, this is, you know, drilling in water. That's the heart of the debate. Does putting the massive drill rig on a 32-acre pile of gravel mean BP's Liberty Island project should be subject to federal rules for drilling on land, or should it be subject to the more rigorous rules of offshore drilling? The fact is, three years ago, BP succeeded in getting a land-based drilling permit. In an email to CNN, a BP spokesman says the company carefully followed the state and federal permitting systems. And addressing environmentalist complaints, he added, it's hard to imagine anyone who knows the facts or the history of this project would make such a claim. But after the Gulf oil disaster, federal and state regulators aren't so confident in BP's plans to drill out here on Liberty Island. Now are taking another look. One of the reasons, environmental groups say MMS approved BP's environmental review in 2008 with minimal changes. We asked the Interior Department for comment, twice in fact, but they declined to answer, only saying, quote, in light of the BP oil spill in the Gulf and new safety requirements, we will be reviewing the adequacy of the current version of Liberty Project's spill plan. There is something else you should know about this so-called onshore drilling project. BP's plan calls for drilling two miles under the island and then going sideways to drill six to eight miles offshore. It's called ultra-extended reach drilling. A BP brochure calls the plan, quote, one of the oil and gas industry's most significant technological advances. The main risk is what's termed a gas kick, undetected methane bubbles in a sideways pipe, and of course the inability to control a huge oil spill in an already fragile environment. We don't have the ability to deal with it if anything goes wrong. If there's an oil spill in the Arctic, uh, we just, there isn't the infrastructure that there is in the Gulf to deal with. And we're seeing in the Gulf, even when, when there is infrastructure, when there are people in boats and boom and dispersants and all that sort of thing, they still can't deal with an oil spill. We asked BP for permission to visit Liberty Island, and the answer was no. This is as far as BP would allow us to get to their Liberty Island project. It's a security gate at the Endicott oil field. No interviews, no tours. BP says it's for security reasons. If you want to actually see what they're doing out in the ocean here, you have to fly. But we wanted to see the island so we could see what this sideways drilling might mean in this environment. First thing we noticed, Liberty Island is connected via a causeway to another BP operation called Endicott Island. Four years ago, BP was fined because oil and diesel fuel had been dumped into the Arctic from Endicott Island. The company says it will cooperate with any federal and state regulators who want to take another look at BP's plans three miles out at sea on its Liberty Island. Drew Griffin, CNN, Prudhoe Bay, Alaska.